Welcome to Direct U.S. Immigration's channel, where you get direct access to our most up-to-date immigration and global mobility space. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm going to talk about an immigrant visa that allows people with great academic or work achievements to immigrate to the U.S. permanently. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. The EB-1 Base Green Card is a first preference visa that is open to three subgroups of foreign nationals. There is the EB-1A subcategory for people with extraordinary ability, EB-1B for outstanding professors, and EB-1C for certain multinational executives or managers. You may be eligible for an EB-1 Green Card if you are a foreign national who meets any of the three descriptions. So first, a person with extraordinary ability. Another option could be an outstanding professor or researcher. And the third option is a certain multinational manager or executive. Now, each of the subcategories has its own specific criteria applicants must meet. A worker with extraordinary ability in the science, arts, education, business, or athletics may qualify for a green card as a priority worker. The person's achievements must have been publicly recognized and resulted in a period of sustained national or international acclaim leading to this category having been also nicknamed the Einstein visa. So the application process often shows that the foreign national is a widely acknowledged leader in the artistic, educational, business, or athletic fields. Now what's unique about this category is that no job offer is needed in this subcategory so long as the foreign national will continue working in the field of expertise after arriving in the United States. If, however, the worker has received a job offer from a U.S. employer, that employer can help with the EB-1 application by filing the required initial petition with the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, uh, also known as USCIS, uh, on Form I-140. Suppose a foreign national has an international reputation for being outstanding in a particular academic field. In that case, that person may qualify for a green card as a priority worker within the outstanding professors and researchers subcategory with an offer of work from a U.S. employer. Now, the foreign national will have to show at least three years of experience in either teaching or research in the relevant academic field. The job offer for which the applicant is coming to the U.S. must be a specific tenured or tenure track uh, teaching or research position at a university or an institution of higher learning, or if the position is at a research organization, it must be a permanent position. This subcategory of the EB-1 priority worker category is limited to executives or managers who have been working for a qualified company outside of the U.S. for at least one out of the three past years. Or if the person is already in the U.S. Uh, on a temporary visa, it's possible to qualify based on having been employed as an executive uh, or manager at that company for one of the three years before arrival in the U.S. So the foreign national must now be planning to take a managerial or executive position with a U.S. branch, affiliate, or subsidiary of the very same company. Now the U.S. office must show that it, ha that it has been in business for at least one full year. And the prerequisites are pretty similar to those of the L-1 intracompany transferee non-immigrant visa, so more so similar to the L-1A visa. The EB-1 immigrant visa application process varies depending on the subcategory you're applying for. Under the EB-1A, if you apply under extraordinary ability, you can file your petition. So you must file Form I-140, which is the Petition for Alien Worker with USCIS. In other words, you don't need to wait for an employer's job offer, nor do you need one to sponsor your petition. If you apply for an outstanding professor, researcher, multinational executive, or manager, you, you will need to have an employer to sponsor your petition. The employer will file Form I-140 with USCIS on your behalf. The processing time generally depends on the backlogs at the USCIS office processing your I-140 petition. And it generally takes over seven months to receive a decision. If you want to expedite the process, you may request a premium processing service that guarantees a decision within 15 days. And to do this, you will need to submit Form I-907 to USCIS with an additional fee of $2,500. 
Now, the EB1A applicant may enjoy a speedier process than other sub subcategories as they don't have to wait for an employment offer. However, all EB1 uh, visa categories generally have a faster application process timeline than other employment-based visas. And this is due to the non-requirement of labor certification process. So after submitting your I-140 petition either by yourself or through an employer, you will receive the following notifications from USCIS. So a receipt of notice confirming that USCIS has received your petition, a notice of biometrics appointment if applicable, a notice to appear for a visa interview, uh, again if required, and notice of decision which can either be an approval or a denial. So the next step after uh, getting designation under the EB-1 visa category is to apply for a green card which will allow you to live and work anywhere in the U.S. To obtain a green card or lawful permanent resident status, you must file form I-45, which is the application to register permanent residence or just status to USCIS if you are inside of the U.S. Now, this form will be processed and if and when approved, you will get your green card in the mail. Now, you can then apply for U.S. citizenship after obtaining your EB-1 green card. So you will be eligible to apply for citizenship after amassing five years of continuous residence as a green card holder. So another common question is about health care. So yes, you will have access to health care in the U.S. as an EB-1 green card holder. Now, this is important because the costs of getting medical treatment in the U.S. are among the highest in the world. I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if this content or information helps you in any way. Comment below if you want me to talk about something in specific and share this resource widely because you never know who needs answers to these questions. Additionally, if you have any specific questions about this video as they pertain to your unique circumstances, please schedule a consultation with us um, also at the link below and I will see you in the next video.